sportswear industry's image in inner city America. And for Nike in particular, their high profile use of black personalities in advertising has backfired in the Afro-American community. A Chicago-based civil rights group called PUSH, which was founded in the early 70s by Jesse Jackson, led a boycott of Nike shoes and recommended that young blacks avoid them at all costs. We in the black community spend more than $500 million with the athletic shoe industry and more than $200 million with Nike alone. And so now we want Nike to put money in black banks to advertise in the black community through our newspapers and magazines and radio stations and tele television stations. We want blacks at higher levels of employment at Nike. We want blacks on the board. We want them to provide jobs and job training in the public housing in the inner cities around the nation because it's our inner city youth that wear the gym shoes and keep the athletic shoe companies uh, receiving profits and benefiting uh, from their business. Since that campaign began, Nike has uh, named a black as director of employment for the entire corporation. They've hired a black, Hispanic, and Asian advertising agency. They've begun to schedule advertisement on black television stations. Mr. Jordan, do you have something you'd like to share with the rest of the class? Yeah, don't be stupid. Stay in school. Do what Michael Jordan says. Stay in school! So our campaign is effective. The boycott has revealed a sinister new chapter in the trainer wars. At the height of the anti-Nike campaign, rivals Reebok took out a series of adverts in a push magazine, fueling unfounded accusations that they were aiding and abetting a dirty tricks campaign against Nike. Reebok deny any part in a conspiracy and within weeks were defending themselves against equally damaging claims. Rumours spread down the line that Reebok was secretly a white South African company exploiting the black community's love of sport. Was this rumour run riot or another damaging piece of trainer war disinformation? Reebok originated as a UK company, today is a US company. Reebok uh, made a declaration a number of years ago that it was withdrawing from South Africa. Reebok is probably one of the few companies in the world that embraces human rights as a corporate value. And each year Reebok uh, awards its own human rights awards to young people around the world who have done the service to the cause of human rights. It is very frustrating when this misinformation hits the market. The trainer wars are fought out at every level, in the boardroom, in advertising, and ultimately in the shops. For the major companies, the profits they make selling pieces of colourful rubber to the world have become the very breath of modern business. We have a very specific mission. And if you read our mission statement, you'll, you'll, you'll hear and you'll see words like performance, meaningful difference, passion, uh, you, won't, you won't see the word profitability in the mission statement because we think profitability is kind of like breathing. Uh, you know, may not live to breathe, but you better damn well breathe if you want to live. The trainer wars are the inevitable byproduct of an industry obsessed with sporting competition. Sportswear industry's image in inner city America, and for Nike in particular, their high-profile use of black personalities in advertising has backfired in the Afro-American community. A Chicago-based civil rights group called PUSH, which was founded in the early 70s by Jesse Jackson, led a boycott of Nike shoes and recommended that young blacks avoid them at all costs. We in the black community spend more than $500 million with the athletic shoe industry and more than $200 million with Nike alone. And so now we want Nike to put money in black banks to advertise in the black community through our newspapers and magazines and radio stations and tele television stations. We want blacks at higher levels of employment at Nike. We want blacks on the board. We want them to provide jobs and job training in the public housing in the inner cities around the nation because it's our inner city youth that wear the gym shoes and keep the 
athletic shoe companies uh, receiving profits and benefiting uh, from their business. Since that campaign began, Nike has uh, named a black as director of employment for the entire corporation. They've hired a black, Hispanic, and Asian advertising agency. They've begun to schedule advertisement on black television stations. Uh, Mr.